So let's move on in the second part of the series and uh, look at the second task, which is notebook navigation. Open the folder symbol in the left sidebar. Here are different symbols. This is the one we already looked at in class. You can search on the page, find and replace. You can uh, look at individual code snippets. This gives you a list of all the different code snippets. We don't want that. We want the folder symbol, files. So you open it. And um, I'm going to make this a little bigger. And uh, in the sidebar, you can click on the symbol above sample data. So this is contains files for some machine learning exercise, I believe. And there's a symbol here that you can right click on. I'm going to do this. And then you create a new folder named practice. Okay. And there's the folder. Now navigate to the next higher folder, which is this symbol, and uh, right above this folder. And what you see here is a complete um, Linux file hierarchy, folder hierarchy, you know, with executable files here, files for the booting process, the content that we will be working on, um, uh, the, the various devices, which is a word of Linux for peripherals, um, utilities, uh, libraries for 32-bit systems, 64-bit systems, um, media devices, which means mounted um, uh, DVDs or whatever you have, mount points, and so on and so on, all kinds of stuff. And some stuff that's actually not in uh, regular Linux distributions like this one, which is a link to or files for the TensorFlow machine learning library. We don't need any of that. Um, you should inside content see practice. And uh, what you do is you go inside practice, which is empty. There's nothing. Right click and now upload the files to this folder. The files we just um, downloaded onto our computer. So I did this, open. And um, it's, it informs me that when the runtime is recycled, the uploaded files will, will get deleted. Now. What I don't know is if um, whenever your connection up here drops, if that automatically means that the files are deleted. If that is the case, then you may have to upload them again. But for now, both files are here, so we won't worry about that. <coughs> and this is what you should see. You can see that's exactly what you just generated. Now, um, uh, here, we should now enter the command to change the working directory to practice. Remember, our current directory we did this here is content. And we want to go to the practice directory. And uh, how do we do that? We do that by setting with the setwd command. Setwd command um, needs the file path in quotes. In this case, it's quite simple. We're going to uh, look at a bonus command in a moment. If it's not so simple, if you don't actually know the path or if you are on some machine where the path requires a lot of um, different back, backslash, forward slash um, paths. But in this case, it's very simple. We have to set the path to content and then in content practice. Now, the only difference to your Windows machine is that you have forward slashes, slashes here, while in Windows you have backward slashes. If you look at a window path, um, where is it up here? Boop, boop, boop. Actually, you can see this. Let's say, let's say it downloads the downloads directory. If you right click on this one, look at the properties of the file, you can see that this um, path has backward slashes, upper left to down right, and uh, in Linux that's in, actually all Unix-based systems, that's the opposite. And so we set WD to content practice. And there's no feedback. There's no error either. So now we need to not uh, enter the command to show that we are, in fact, there. And this is just a repetition of the previous command, get WD. And indeed, we're now in content slash practice. So anything we do now will automatically include the files that we have uploaded to that folder. Now, there's a bonus question. If you did the data camp assignment, you know this command file.path. And the question is print the full path to this file hotdogs.txt as a character using the function file.path. And the, um, 
uh, you may be conf have been confused by the uh, um, by the uh, um, description as a character, but the truth is that file.path as a function, is, which you can find out by um, looking it up, actually creates a character. And since I want you to get into the habit of doing that, I'm just going to go to a new tab and I'll look for the documentation for file.path. Also go do that by going to um, opening an R instance and type question mark or help um, file.path same result. Um, this opens the, the um, help file on your own computer. But what I did before is I just Googled it and uh, opened it on um, in Google. Yeah. The content is the same. This is a little easier to read. So um, constructs the path to a file from components in a platform independent way. That's the main thing. We don't need to understand all the attributes. Um, the point is there is a um, you get a character vector of the arguments which are all put together in as one character. So we're going to go back and look at the different parts and we invoke the command file.path. A good habit, by the way, is to store this, you know, store this in some vector. At the moment, I just want to see the result. So it's a function and the different parts of the file path are slash content, slash practice, another folder, and the name of the file, hot dog. Dot, uh, hot dogs dot text. And if we enter that, we get the character back that I asked for. It's in, in apostrophes. Single and double apostrophes are not distinguished here, but here you see the results. And that's enough for this um, second video.